Welcome back to our discussion. This discussion we're going to be discussing the Windows Control Panel. Now, the Control Panel is a window that contains several small utility programs called applets that are used to manage hardware, software, users in the system. Now, for Windows Vista and XP to access the Control Panel, you're going to click Start and then click Control Panel. Now, for Windows 2000 to open the Control Panel, click Start, Settings, and Control Panel. And as you can see by the figure behind me, it shows the Vista control panel and this next one here shows the Windows XP control panel, panel in category view. So you'll select the category to see the applets in that category or you can click to you can click switch to classic view to see the applets. Now when you first open the control panel you'll see them as they're displayed in the, as in the earlier versions of Windows with classic view. Now besides accessing these several applets in the control panel from the control panel window each applet can be accessed directly. And you're going to learn how to do that as you learn to use these applets later on in the book. For all the applets, if you know the name of the applet program file, and you can launch it, the applet by using the Vista Start dialog box, called the Run dialog box in uh, Windows 2000 XP. For example, to open the mouse properties applet, you would type main.cpl in the Start box, and then press Enter. An applet uh, has a CPL file extension. Let's talk about the first category, which is System Information Utility. And as you can see, it gives you a wealth of information about installed hardware and software, the current system configuration, and currently running programs. For example, you can use it to find out what processor or BIOS version is installed on the motherboard, and how much RAM is installed, uh, the directory where the operating system is installed, the size of the hard drive, the names of currently running drivers, and much more. The System Information window is a composite of information available from several other windows and is especially useful when talking with a technical support person on the phone because it provides a broad technical view of information about the system. The run system uh, to run the system information in Windows Vista, click Start and then enter msinfo32.exe in the Start box and then just press Enter. The information window will open. Now for 2000 XP, click Start click Run, enter msinfo32 in the Run dialog box, and then press Enter. Some, imp some system information can be useful when strange error messages appear during startup. Use it to get a list of drivers that loaded successfully. If you have saved the system information report when the system was starting successfully, comparing it to reports can help identify the problem device. Let's talk about the command prompt window. Now, as you've already seen in this chapter, individual commands can be entered in the Vista search box or the Windows 2000 XP run box. However, you can also open the command prompt window and then use it to enter multiple commands to perform a variety of tasks. To open the window in the Vista and 7 start box or the Windows 2000 XP run box, just enter cmd.exe and press enter. Alternately, you can click start all programs, accessories, and then choose the command prompt. The Vista slash 7 command prompt window is shown. To clear the text in the window, just type CLS and then press enter. To close the window, type exit and press enter. As shown here in the figure, alternately you can click the X to close the window icon in the upper right corner of the window. Throughout this book, you're going to learn many commands that work from this window. And you can also launch a program from the window. For example, when you enter msinfo32.exe, the program name, the system information window will be launched. Now, Windows Vista has two levels of command prompts, a standard window and an elevated window. The standard window, shown here behind me, um, you notice you can notice the figure that the default directory is the currently logged on users folder. Commands that require administrative privileges will not work from this standard command prompt window. To get an elevated command prompt, click Start, All Programs, Accessories, and then right-click the command prompt. Then select Run as Administrator from the shortcut window and then respond to the user access control box. The resulting command prompt is shown here behind me. Now notice that the word Administrator in the title bar, which indicates the elevated window and the default directory, which is the system drive, percent, system drive percent, which means you are in the Windows System 32 folder. Now, this concludes our chapter 2 including introducing the operating systems. So now I want you to move on to your Chapter 2 assessment, the full-blown one, including a matching definitions to the key term portion. This will be a timed exam, so be prepared. I'm not going to hold you to uh, not having an open book when you take the exam, 
but you won't have time to flip for every answer. Good luck.